1992 as an alternative to the Space Exploration Initiative by Martin Marietta engineers Robert Zubrin and David Baker. Mars Direct was an attempt to provide a more coherent plan by emphasizing simplicity and robustness, low cost, and high efficiency. The mission would get a crew of four to Mars for a 550-day stay, with access to all the materials necessary for extensive geological and biological research, all for the bargain min price of $20 billion. Year 1, a modified space shuttle booster system with almost the lifting power of a Saturn V takes off from Cape Canaveral. The Ares is carrying a 45-ton, unmanned, bullet-shaped craft called the Earth Return Vehicle, or ERV, that is sent on an intercept trajectory with Mars. After a six-month voyage, the ERV reaches Mars, aero breaks into orbit, picks a landing site, and lands. Now here's where things get really interesting. The ERV carries nothing but liquid hydrogen, six tons of the stuff. Using a small rover-mounted nuclear reactor as a power source, the ERV will react the hydrogen with Mars' CO2 atmosphere in a saboteur reactor, producing both water and methane. The methane will be used as a fuel for the cruise rover and for the return trip to Earth. Some of the water will be stored for drinking, but most will be electrolyzed, making more hydrogen for the saboteur reactor and oxygen for both the crew to breathe and the rockets to burn. By the time the crew arrives, the ERV will have turned its 6 tons of hydrogen into 108 tons of fuel. Year 3. Two more Ares boosters are prepared for launch back on Earth. The first one carries another ERV, its mission profile identical to the one from two years earlier. This is Mission 2's ERV, but can also serve as a lifeboat for the first mission should something go wrong. The second Ares is carrying the HAB, or Habitation Module, basically a huge tuna can, along with the Mission 1 crew. The crew consists of two scientists and two engineers. Think two Spocks and two Scotties. They've got a geologist, a biologist, an ace mechanic, and a jack-of-all-trades type who is also the pilot and captain of the mission. Now, instead of spending 108 days in bone-degrading zero-g, the astronauts will have the benefit of an artificial gravity system that will gradually acclimatize them to Mars' gravity. By using the spent upper stage of the Ares as a counterweight, the HAB can be spun fast enough to replicate Earth's gravity. Then, over the course of 108 days, the spin is slowed down until it replicates Mars' gravity. The crew will never even notice the change and will be better prepared for their time on the Red Planet. And what a time it'll be. Once the HAB has aerobraked into orbit and landed next to the ERV, the crew will have 550 days with which to explore, as well as material to help them, like a pressurized rover capable of two-week excursions and a fleet of small robots and rovers. They will search for water and signs of life, but they will also find suitable sites for future missions and possibly colonies. Year 5. When their time is up, the crew will climb into the now fully fueled ERV and return to Earth on a 180-day intercept trajectory, this time in zero-g. Meanwhile, HAB-2 and ERV-3 are launched to Mars. Every two years, a HAB and an ERV will launch, while an ERV will bring a crew back home. Each mission will scout out a new location and, once the best one has been found, more HABs and ERVs will be directed there, creating the first Mars base and eventually the first colony. Alright, let's look at the merits of this mission. At only $20 billion in 1992, it's more than 20 times cheaper than the Space Exploration Initiative plan. It uses a direct launch, meaning there's no need for costly, complicated, and unreliable construction in space. It creates its own fuel on the surface with techniques that have been around since the 1800s so the boosters have less to lift to low Earth orbit. It simulates gravity on the Mars-bound trek by spinning the whole craft, acclimatizing the crew, and combating bone loss. By putting the crew on Mars for 550 days, the mission is increasing scientific opportunities. And best of all, it's designed to use current technology, so there's no waiting around for R&D to develop warp drives. But it allows future technologies to be implemented when they arrive, improving mission capabilities. Now, the bad. The main problem with the mission is that while the crew travels to and lives on Mars in a large, comfortable HAB with gravity, the return trip is 180 days in a small, cramped module, not much bigger than an Apollo capsule, in zero-g. While the plan never got off the ground due to a lack of formal support from NASA, Mars Direct is important because of how it set the tone for later plans. Up to that point, Mars mission plans invariably used huge Battlestar Galactica-type starships assembled in orbit and other space-age futuristic concepts. Mars Direct changed how scientists think about a manned mission to Mars by making it achievable, and its influence can still be seen today in the current crop of Mars projects. 